Yeah, all right. We, we are going to look at the limitations of product life cycle, and that's what should be on your screen. Limitations of product life cycle. So, Ganza, try to invite Ines. I don't know that she is here. Try to invite her. So, limitations of product life cycle, fluctuations, fluctuations in the sales data. Fluctu fluctuations, fluctuations. That word disturbs me when it comes to pronouncing it. But I think I tried this time around. Fluctuations. Yeah. Keep on changing, changing, changing. One now look, this product life cycle, we are basing it on one assumption. That sales will keep on increasing. You see, they are telling us that in the curve from introduction. Sales will increase to the growth, they increase to the maturity. When, when, they reach, when they reach maturity, they will start declining. That's the knowledge we have. We know that sales will keep on increasing and increasing and increasing up to maturity. That's the assumption we have here. But some, some goods or some sales may fluctuate. Let me show you this curve here. Like this curve here. You see? Sales are supposed to keep on rising and rising, but now this company sales were fluctuating from from Jan, the increase from 1,000 like to 1,200 like to 2,000 like they decrease up to even below 1,000. They remain there for a period of time. They increase, they decline, they increase. So, what I like cycle tells us that sales will always be rising up to maturity and they will decline. But sometimes sales may fluctuate. They may keep on increasing, rising, increasing, rising. You can find out that you are selling more goods in the introduction stage, more in the introduction stage. Growth, growth stage, they decline. Maturity, they still decline. You get So any curve can be there. And this PLC tells us that it is static, it is always rising. Have you got that point? Sorry? Yes. Yeah, so PLC, there is a limitation that sometimes sales may fluctuate, they may fluctuate. And that one makes it irrelevant. And you cannot make right prediction because they are fluctuating. So when sales data, when sales data, PLC bases on sales data. That's why this curve we have sales and this line we have uh, the period of time. So when sales are fluctuating, you cannot make right forecasts. You cannot make right predictions. You cannot make better decisions. So most of the times when you have fluctuating sales, Data. Someone mute your mic. Abraham again. I don't know. You missed yesterday. You're making yourself seen. I don't. Know. So that is it. The first point is forecast. Sorry, fluctuations and limits decision making. So when you talk about a point, Amanda, next time, talk about what can stop you from or what can block you from. So when you have fluctuations in sales data it limits better decision making regarding pricing promotion and all the marketing mix good so that's the first point next point is the delay the first one is the fluctuation of sales data here they are telling us a delay in sales data good so let us continue when you sell goods and you do have to get the information. You know, sales data is like the information regarding the people you sold to and uh, how much did you sell. So sales data, you need to know the people you sold to and what did you sell to them and how much. That's what we call sales data. It should have three elements. What did you sell? Which people did you sell to? And how much did you sell to them? When you delay to collect this data and analyze it, PLC will be irrelevant. So for PLC to be a successful phenomenon, you need to collect and analyze data in time. 
Now, when you hear my words, you feel like uh, I gave a limitation and I've given a solution. I said learn in sales data. I gave the examples like the people I sell to, the quantity I sell, I sell to them, and how much. Sorry, and what did I sell to them? The how, the when, and the what I sold it to them. Okay, and I said if it delays, it may make my planning and forecasts wrong. And I give a solution and I say, for you to have a relevant PLOC, make sure you can collect and analyze data in time. So when you are giving explanations, talk about what you are explain what you are talking about, show how it can be bad, and then tell us the solution. Have you understood that? Sorry? Yes. Good. Delaying yes, sales data. Thank you. Yeah, so delaying sales data, talk about the people you sold to, what did you sell to what did you sell to them and how much? And if this data delays, of course it's going to affect your decision making regarding the four P's. Mention them in the paper, no problem. After that, say however, the business can try to make relevancy of PLC by collecting and analyzing data in time, maybe by employing the sales agents, maybe record keepers, you know maybe a uh, tracking kind of you know tracking machines you see like pharmacies they have those desktops they always track they know how much they have in stock and how much they have sold so it is automatic the system has it and it helps them to make forecast and they say i think painkillers of this type are sold more than the other painkillers because painkillers have different time kind of types so you can easily know which Pain killer is sold most and the one that is not sold most. So the one is sold most is the one you stock more. So that's what we are trying to talk about. You can make good predictions when you have a tracking kind of a system and record keeping. Very good. So we come to explanations are there in my PowerPoint, but I try to use the data kind of things. And so we, we talk about varying market conditions, varying. Yeah, you can find out that people who, people in Kanombe may buy more of, uh, let me say drinks, may buy more of uh, Nyanja juice, but when you come to Chimilonko, so those, those ones they buy Nyanja, then others they buy water. So depending on the market conditions and places, should understand, so PLC doesn't have that in consideration. PLC for it, it is absolute. It doesn't tell us that maybe these people demand more than people in Kanobe demand more than those ones in the Remela. That one is not there. Very market conditions. It will not tell us that in this season people will not have money. This season they will have a lot of money. That one is not there in the PLC. So you find out that uh, Therefore, products which are heat in one place might not be heat in other regions or territories due to the differences in consumption patterns of those territories. You find out that maybe products for children, they are bought more in Kanombe. And maybe in Kachio, they are not bought more. Meaning, maybe Kanombe has more children than, than Kachio. That one doesn't have it. This period doesn't have that. So you can find out that the PLC in Kacho is fluctuating, but the PLC in Kanombe is not fluctuating. So varying market conditions depending on buying habits of people, location, mention those points by the way, varying market conditions like income levels, that is a, a market condition, income levels, uh, buying habits of people, uh, population, you can find out that one place has more people than another and it makes its PLC fluctuate. Uh, it can be government policy, it can be pandemics like this one, the pandemic that is uh, striking all uh, over, every, every, like everywhere. So PLC doesn't have those varying market conditions. But when you are in a business, I'm giving a solution now. When you are in a business operating very well, you need to consider those market conditions in your 
management and say in case they come in, in what should we do? So PLC doesn't have that in consideration, but yet it is a reality. People don't buy the same quantity or the same goods. No, you can find out someone buys more of the other and this one buys more of this. So the varying, the deferring, they're not, they are not there. So we have a uh, effect of other elements, the P's. Yeah, PLC, it can be very okay, but when the problem is the other P's, that's, this, this point is talking about that. And that's why I told you, every time they give you a case study to justify, to recommend, to analyze, don't always think of price only. Though it is also okay, you can say let us manipulate the price, let us lower them or whatever. But don't always base on price. And this point is talking about effects of other P's. Product itself is just one P amongst the four P's of marketing. And there are other three elements such as price, place, promotion, or even P and packaging. So product life cycle might be okay. The product is very well built and developed and modified. But when the problem is with other P's, PLC doesn't have that in consideration. It thinks that sales shall always be sold every time. But you can find out that they have not thought of the, you can find out that the product is okay, but the channel of distribution is not fine, or the promotion methods are not the ideal ones, or price is not affordable. So when you analyze the case studies, don't always narrow your minds on one P. Always think of other P's and uh, suggest accordingly. Have you heard of that? Yes. All right. Thank you. So elements of other, sorry, effect of other elements. You mention other P's and you try to see how you can add about them. Here, we won't explain them because we don't have a case study. But if you have a case study, you can easily see and, and note that the product is fine. Or it is having something like a problem, but also other P's have a problem. So you can try to talk about the product first. Then you say, however, the price is somehow higher than the rival's price or the competitor's price. So I recommend or I advise the general manager to keep the prices lower than the competitors or the same. That's a good argument. Or you say place, some places, some locations that need these goods, they don't have any nearby store. And so the competitor might outcompete us because of that. Therefore, I recommend or I advise the business to set up a nearby outlet. Promotion, you, you, you advise or you recommend the best kind of promotion channel. You can say billboards, you can say social media. Social media is one of the trending points and cuts across, it is thought, it is all over the whole world. So you need social media, never forget it under promotion. Twitter, those trends, Facebook, those things work, the websites, that's what we call the social media and e-commerce. People trading via internet is very cheap, very cheap compared to the TV advert and the billboard and covers a bigger, you know, population. So never forget it also, but we shall get there. I'll tell you how to handle that. So lastly, it is not applicable to brands. This one I talked about it in my introduction. Someone asked me, KFC, I don't remember the person, but I remember someone who asked me, KFC is a new company in Rwanda, but you find out that the turn up might be higher than any business under introduction. Meaning, KFC already has a name. It is a brand. People were waiting for it. Some kids were reading it in newspapers and they are just stories told about it. Now when the year that it is coming here, they, they just can't wait. So brands, brands, mostly the multinational companies, those ones, 
most of the times product life cycle doesn't work on them. You find out that even in the introduction stage, they can still make more sales, rapid ones. And by the time they get to, actually they don't even spend a lot of time under that introduction stage. They just start right away selling more. So the brands, Apple, some people don't just have Apple because of other issues, not because of the product itself. Uh, we have uh, McDonald's, you know, snacks, those products of them. P people just, if they tell us that McDonald's is going to set up in Rwanda, we can just go and and buy. Because we already know about it, we see it in, our, in the movies we watch. So it, it is a brand already, Jack Ma and Alibaba, if it's to set up a branch in Rwanda, we shall just go and buy, because we already know about it. Gucci, th those are brands, we know them. So most of the times, these products don't, sorry, this PLC doesn't work, doesn't apply to uh, brands. Someone asked, texted him, I think it was Goziga, texted him and said, which stage do businesses always love most? That stage is always maturity because on maturity stage or at maturity stage, businesses are having more sales. You saw the curve, sales are higher than growth. What we were measuring was the growth rate. But when you look at the quantity, maturity has a lot. So everyone wants to be on that maturity stage for a longer period of time. So here the point is brands, iPhone, when it is launching its products, I think I. Did I show the video to you or oh, it was senior six? I don't know. But iPhone went is launching its products. That launching event, people are always very many. I was on YouTube yesterday and uh, people were trying to go to that. Prison break season six is coming. But it was wrong. But the clip, the clip was posted like one hour ago, but had two million people views. 2 million views, just one hour, because someone just said the, the, the trailer of, 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 of season six, prison break, and they after said uh, it was like fun is made, fun is made, it was made by fans. So, but it had 2 million views in just one hour, because it's using a brand of a given series that trended for a long period of time. Yesterday, we all saw that Premier League is going to start in June, I think around 16th or 17th, or 20 something, I don't remember the date. But that very post, yeah, that very post, in just two minutes, I think it had like million shares. People had already shared that post on Facebook because it is a brand people already know. So, PLC doesn't work on brands. Brands can, is, can even make more sales in production state. But you find someone who is still a new business, you need to build a brand. It doesn't take two days or four days. It takes time. So that's why they always tell us that a first step is always not easy. But once you are done with the first step and the second step, the next ones are always very easy to climb. So that's the point. This one doesn't apply to brands. And uh, we have examples here. I have a given table here, PowerPoint has everything. So yeah, that is it. And uh, I think you got it, you got the limitations and I think you have noted them down. And uh, this is the analytical part of this topic and you really need it. Should I do something about it or you, you've got it, I can proceed. Any question? Questions, please. Okay. Do you have a question? Mm. Uh, could you uh, tell me the difference between uh, delay in sales data and fluctuation of data sums, yeah. 
the difference between delay in cells data and fluctuation. <laughs> no, I want to read people's texts here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, delay in sales data. When you when you sell goods today and tomorrow and on Sunday and on Monday, when businesses are selling, they may they always sell what they have sold, but most of them don't sell the people they have sold it to. So you can know what you're selling, but you may not know which people you're selling to and which group of people buys most of your goods. So when we talk about groups of people, we talk about segments by age, by location, by gender, by income. Those are the segments I'm talking about. So when you are selling goods and you don't easily group them out to know which section buys most of your goods, you will create a delay and will make wrong prediction. So most of businesses just tell us which people they sell to. So they just write down what they sold and they write their names, but they don't have their details. So data goes beyond that introduction of saying, Moses bought a phone from here. You don't know where I even come from. So you not know you can't easily know which kind of the population buys most of your goods. So a delay is when you don't have the right information to easily based on to make predictions. If New Vision has parents that bring their children here and they don't have records to know that the section of parents that come to New Vision, they come from this location, or they are of this income bracket, or they are of this age, or they are of this type. That's what I'm trying to talk about. You cannot make right prediction. But fluctuations, I gave you the curve. You can sell more goods today and a few tomorrow and fewer the other day. And then higher or more the other day. So when it is always fluctuating, I know you offer economics. Up, down, up, down, up, down. That's a limitation. Product life cycle doesn't tell us that. It always it tells us that it will always go up, reach a maximum, go down. But there is an instant when it can just fluctuate. Uh, Bill said, I repeat about varying market conditions. Uh, market conditions are like factors affecting demand. Because demand, it is like customers, it is like a market. So a market is like, where there is a word in market, say customer, varying customer conditions, let us say like that, varying customer conditions. Co customers' conditions can be, can be all about income levels, government policy, prices, uh, the, the age and everything, the way you know the factors affecting demand. So, PLC doesn't consider that. You know, when we are talking about limitations, people who offer econ, you are going to see that. We talk about theories and we give limitations. Whatever the theory doesn't talk about, it's what we talk about to criticize it. That's why we don't say disadvantages, we say limitations. Because PLC is like a theory. So, you talk about what the theory doesn't talk about. So the theory of PLC just says sales will always increase depending on the cycle, the stage you are at or you are on. So, but I might be on a stage of maturity, but when that kind of stage, the pandemic comes in. So instead of my sales rising, they will even become they, they become they, the curve will be falling 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 and falling meaning the problem is not with my product it is not with the business but with with the conditions around or oh, i've reached maturity i expect more sales but then my income bracket 
it is uh, children. And that time of that time they have gone back to school and most of them are boarding st students. Meaning it's not because of the product, it's not because of the business, but it's because of the customer condition that now has gone back to school. So we talk about market conditions, they vary and they make the PLC not work out. Yeah, so I think more I've worked on, you said I try to go slow, I've tried that. Bill, I've repeated your question, Melissa, I've answered it. Good, so that is the, those are the limitations. They are very analytical. You cannot cram my words I use to explain, but when you understand it, you can easily also get your own example, apply to any case study given the paper, or even when you are arguing there with people. I always people, I always love people who argue. You argue about sense, that's what I love most. When you argue about sense, your mind can boil, you produce ideas, but when you are always the yes, yes person, you cannot comment. You know, it is also okay. So we are done with the limitations. I'm going to take you to cash flow and product life cycle. We've studied the product life cycle. We've connected it to marketing mix. We have connected it to extension strategies. We have talked about its advantages and limitations. Now we want to know how does it affect cash flow. People who study the O level, you know cash flow has inflows and outflows. Now, in this instance, product life cycle can make you spend a lot or can make you spend any amount of money depending on the stage. I repeat, cash flow is about how your money goes out and comes in, inflow, outflow. Product life cycle has four stages. Depending on each stage, it can determine how much you're going to spend or you're going to expect uh, receiving. Now, if you are under introduction, do you expect more inflows or outflows? And why? Can you speak, please? Outflows. 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 Very good. Yeah. So you already know even this thing. So let me share something small here. Remember, there's a difference between cash flow and profit. So we are not talking about profit. We are talking about the cover you want here. Yeah. See ya. Yes. You can ask a question. Mm -hmm. Between growth stage and maturity, which one do business prefer more? What do you think you would prefer? You yourself? I would prefer growth. Why? Which stage growth. has more sales? Which stage it's has growth. more sales here and here? Growth. No, you didn't understand. Here we say sales increase rapidly. We didn't say sales are more. We just said they increase rapidly from here up to here. But still on maturity stage, sales are higher. Sales on maturity stage are higher than growth. But what we said was growth stage, you can be selling, uh, you can be selling 10 kilograms today, tomorrow you sell 40, the other day you sell 100. Is that rapid growth? It is increasing almost times four. Today you sell 10, tomorrow you sell 40, the other day you sell 100. That's what we call the rapid growth rate. But on maturity stage, we are trying to say that. On growth stage, you left it when you are selling 100. When you get to maturity, you'll be selling like 100, 120, 100, 120. Meaning, maturity, you're selling more more than what we are saying on growth stage. But on maturity, there is no bigger difference between the sales you're making. But on growth stage, the big difference was very big. That's what we, we say. But the sales you sell here are very many. They are more than the ones you sell here. But the rate, the rate is the speed. 
Uh, am I communicating? Yes, sir. Yeah. So everyone would love maturity. Here you, you are make, you are selling a lot, a lot. But the difference between today and tomorrow and the next month is not always bigger. But you are selling a lot. So let us go to cash flow. Look at this curve here. Uh, now, product of cycle, you, you already know it. Sales. Now, this is introduction or development. Now, sorry, cash flow starts from development because by the time you introduce something, there is some work you did behind the curtains. So that's what we are trying to mean. Now, I want to interpret it very well. So have your eyes on your screen. I think I'll be trying to move this cursor here. Development, you do some research, you try to, 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 re, to purchase some machines to use, to introduce a new product, you recruit expertise, data workers. Now, all that work, remember you started from zero. It will be, when you see that curve going down like this, it means there are a lot of cash outflow. You are spending a lot, you are getting to the negative. Because here there is zero, so you are going to the negative. Development, when you are trying to come up with a product, you have not yet even introduced the product. You are just spending. You are spending. The curve goes to the negative. Now you see here, it is somehow connected to introduction here. And the curve is still going down. It means you're spending more. You have not yet sold anything. So here, you are, you are going to start selling something. When you start selling something, you cover some costs. Because I told you in business, never make a scene of saying that sales are increasing and costs are increasing. Whenever you have higher sales revenue or higher sales revenue, costs are always reducing because the revenue will be covering some costs. So when you look at development here, uh, you are spending and spending and spending. This is introduction. Now, as you are going to start selling something, the curve somehow reduce, stops going down and it will be like remaining on that static kind of level. Now, when you, when you are on this introduction stage, you are selling something, the, the, the sales are rising. Now, as you leave introduction, it means inflows stop. So you are getting back now. As you try to, where is my cursor? Here, you are going to the growth stage. You are selling more now. You are going to the growth stage. Here, the curve stops going down. When it is going down, it means you are having outflows. You are spending a lot. Now here, it means the sales revenue you're making here is covering the costs, is covering them. So cash, it's like now you, you're having a lot of inflows, inflows. So when you have your, a lot of inflows, by the time you leave growth stage, going to maturity stage, you are making abnormal profits because there's nothing like negative. Whatever you are spending is covered and absorbed within the revenues you're making. So as you start declining, now it means you're spending more. Because remember we said yesterday, uh, when you are on a declining stage, you reduce the prices, you even close some outlets, everything somehow worse. So you go back to the inflows. So when the curve is going down, it means outflows. So you're going back to the outflows. You're spending more than what you earn. But when it is rising, when it is rising, it means you are having more inflows than outflows. When it is rising, that's what it means. But when it is starting to decline, it means you are spending more than what you're earning. Can I repeat the explanation? Or oh, you have already got it. Sure, please.
That's let's last statement you made. Repeat. Repeat. Which, which statement did I make? Wait, 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 was we said we did I make and I can start from that very one. Some boy are not confident. On part of that. living my security and to decline. Okay, let me start again. Okay. This level of the, there is nothing that just comes without preparation. That's why we have a development stage and uh, cash flow. By the way, when you think I'm speaking them out, they will seem easy until you get the pay. Actually, everyone should easily draw it down right now. Because when they ask you cash flow, apart from the a lot of words you, you will write, someone who draws this curve is, is like to earn more marks than you, just writes a lot of the forest of words and whatever. So try to draw it down there and test yourself whether what you're drawing is, is correct and giving out the true meaning we are trying to, 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 to generate from it. So I repeat, development is the research you carry out, the procurement, the purchasing, the recruitment of workers, because you're going to introduce a new product. You may need some kind of spending, that kind of preparation. We call it development stage. That is zero. You, are not, you have not yet spent anything, you have not yet earned anything. Before you earn anything, before where is my cursor? Before you start anything, sorry, before you sell I'm anything, on. you you start I'm spending. Okay. You try to mute your mind. When you are starting, So at zero, zero point, you, you're not selling anything, but you, are, you have started spending on procurement, on purchasing, on recruitment of workers, on maybe building, you see. So everything you spend on the curve keeps on going down. Whenever it's going down, it means you are having a lot of what? You're having what and which one is better than the other in that instance, when you are spending on procurement, purchasing, recruitment, buildings, because you want to introduce a new product. What does it mean? If you based on the relationship between uh, inflows and outflows, which one is better than the other? Inflows. Inflows are what? Uh, like, um, when the profits are increasing. Have we talked about profits yet? Maybe Joe. Covering costs. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It means that you are you're having inflows. <laughs> uh, inflows are things that bring in money. Outflows are things that take money. So when I say you are spending on purchasing, on recruitment of workers, on buildings, on developing a new product, it means that's an outflow. Things are taking out money. So that means in that, on that stage, outflows are greater than inflows. Do you get it now? So I, I forgot, you know some of you people, who, but I, I think seniors did study inflows and outflows. So you, I won't say you didn't, you don't know the thing. So inflows, things are bringing money. Outflows, things taking money. So here we are spending. So as we are spending, the curve is still going down and down and down. But as it is moving, so that's a negative. Whenever it exceeds zero, it is a negative. Now, on this stage on introduction, 
we we are done now developing the product is going is going on market still when the buy is still new on the market though you are selling something but you are still spending more on transport on rent on electricity so all those costs are still higher than what you sell that's why you see some kind of still going down here some kind of going down here but not at a higher rate like here so when it is here going down but not uh with a bigger gap it means you're selling something but costs are still more and you need to mention them don't just say costs in a paper you have to mention the rent labor electricity advertising all that kind of stuff marketing and everything so you keep on selling and selling costs are still higher than what you're selling but here costs are higher at zero sales here costs are very high at zero sales because you have not yet sold anything introduction stage now you have put the product on market you are going to start selling something small but still costs are high and you mention them as you get to growth stage mention the features like now sales are going to start to grow rapidly now as sales are growing rapidly here now you are going to start having more inflows than outflows now you are earning a lot the more sales you are going to start getting here they are going to help you get a lot of revenue a lot of revenue is going to be greater than the expenditure and that means the inflows now are getting to uh to a state where they are greater than the outflows that's why here cash cow starts going up because now you are having more sales more sales rapid sales i talked about that we talked about rapid sales higher profits they are covering costs you get back now you are earning profits costs are no longer more and we talked about that the other day when we were introducing this stage so when you get here this curve is going out of growth now to maturity still cash is going up and up and up as you start getting to decline stage it means now you are expenditures your expenditures are now getting to a stage where they are higher than incomes or revenues why sales are reducing so note note there is a negative relationship between sales and costs or there is a negative relationship between sales and cash flow when sales are rising costs reduce when sales are reducing costs rise the curve explains that well whenever you make more sales costs are covered very well without any complaint so that's what we are trying to talk about now the words are here the ones i'm talking about, all of the words i've been talking about they are here identifying our cash flow might might depend on the life cycle cash flow is vital to a business survival and ignoring the link between cash flow and product life cycles could be very serious so we cannot ignore that cash flow is negative when it is going down, it is negative during the development stage I've talked about. Because costs are high and nothing has yet been produced or sold. That's the development stage, development stage. At introduction stage, the development costs might have ended. That one the covers told us. But heavy promotional expenses are likely to be incurred. And these continue to, and these could continue to growth stage. Those are the reasons you can use to back up your explanations. Now, in addition, there is likely to be much unused factory capacity at this stage, which will place further strain on costs. 
you are selling more, you have more workers, you are, you are spending a lot and you are promoting a lot, but you are selling little. As sales increase, then cash flow could improve. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Now you're going to start getting some cash. Pre precisely when this will happen, it will depend on the length of consumers' credit being offered. Now, at maturity stage, it's likely to see the most positive cash flows. Because sales are very high, promotion costs might likely be lower because of there are a lot of things you're selling. So this curve here tries to tell us the relationship between, in summary, the relationship between sales and costs. When something is high, costs lower, and you feel like you're earning a lot. So that's what we have been talking about since we started talking about marketing. And this curve here tells us all that. I want to welcome some questions and I'll answer them as I conclude. Ask, 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 ask. Sure, you didn't talk about the decline stage. When? Like now, about the cash flow. Like. What did I talk about? I mean, like you talked about the other stages, but you didn't reach on decline. I got there. I said in decline state, now the business is spending more than what is earning because sales are reducing. You didn't hear me saying that. The, the cash curve now is going down. It's going down. So when it is going down, it means now you are making more sales. Sorry, when it's going down, you are making little sales, and that means costs are getting high. Because we talked about that in the product life cycle. In Dika instead, the business is not selling more and is reducing prices because customers are so used to the product. They are no longer interested in the product. So that's what we need to talk about that. There's nothing else. Ilya? Another question? Question, questions. Ganza, what have you got it? Yes, teacher, I wanted to ask like the relationship between the cash and the profit. Mm, cash. What do you think? Because there, it means as your cash flow is increasing, profit is increasing. Not so. When you're earning more, if you earn more cash, that's clear. When you're earning more cash, you're likely to cover costs and you get more profit. So when cash flow is high, profit is high. I, I think we had that curve. Let me show it to you somewhere here. Let me, let me try to discover that curve. See here. Let me show it to you now. That's a good question. Uh, you see that curve? Yes. yes, no. Yeah. So where you see revenue, revenue stands for revenue stands for sales sales. Because sales increase with the revenue. So it's like sales revenue. Now, uh, meaning when sales are rising, profit is rising too. 
But when sales are declining, profit declines. So there is that positive relationship, positive one. But you see profit starts from a negative line. Negative line. I don't know what's wrong with my person. Yeah, here. It starts from a negative line, below, below the axis. So meaning, below introduction, you are making a lot of losses. That's what we have been even explaining under, under what? Under cash flow. And at this stage, you are you are making a, just losses. We talked about that even under introduction. We said these negative profits you're earning under introduction because costs are very high, promotion expense and everything. So profits start from a negative, and the, because of some sales that are increasing here, you start getting some cap profits, small, small. But now both stage, as it is uh, getting up, rapid growth you get higher profits. Now here profits start declining because on the maturity stage we say there is a lot of competition and prices are tampered with because there is competitive pricing. You almost charge the same price that is charged by your competitors. So profits somehow start rise, sorry, declining. But as they decline, it doesn't mean that you are earning zero. They are declining just yeah, and they are declining because at some point of time also sales start declining and that's where businesses introduce a new product. But as they are declining still, you see here, the decline is not yet still at the same level of growth or introduction. It is just a simple decline. So it almost gets to introduction when you are on this stage of decline. So some businesses can even remain on declining stage for some period of time because they are earning some simple profit, small, small. They are not earning the losses, they are earning low profit. So that's it. I'll answer your question. Uh, now, we are, we are remaining with something small. And uh, it might take us, because I didn't know that I'll finish. Uh, cash flow. But that is it, and you need to know the reasons. Don't just draw the curve, know the reasons. I need you guys at four, for 20 minutes now, because there's something I want us to finish. Next week, I don't want us to repeat this, because if we get to next week when I've not finished product, it will make me now repeat everything I've talked about in order to remind you, and then I'll waste another lesson. So as your minds are still remembering everything we have covered this week, and then so we can save next week and we come for 20 minutes, we cover and finish product and we just know now next week we shall be covering price and we start price as another marketing mix. But if we postpone to next week, it will force us to repeat everything in order to remind you and that one will be time. And uh, even not understanding and even you can even postpone or extend to Tuesday. So. I want to save that time, so I'll be early here, 10 minutes early, so Excuse just, me, sir. just sacrifice 20 minutes. Mm. Excuse me, sir. Go on. What, what if you have something that is at four? You, 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 you miss, of course, but you don't ask what you can. No, like, okay, cause, cause I may mean, have a lesson at four, a private lesson. You are going to miss. Or you, or you talk to that person because 20 minutes are not more. It is just some kind of final remarks and uh, examinable parts because it is not necessary for you to understand this and you don't know how it is asked. So. You can talk to that teacher if you wish to attend this. But if you can't, then and I will not record it. Oh. So, guys, I think I'm done. OK, yeah. sir, thank you. Thank you, too. OK, nice time, guys. I'm done. Be sober, sir, be sober. Yeah, happy day. Good. All right. Go for some break as you prepare for the next lesson. No other lesson, teacher. You, all of you? Some of us. Well, what do they have next?
Geography. Okay. Yeah, me, I'm free to. No, I'm going to mark your work, I think. So. Yeah. Bye bye. End the meeting. Goodbye.